Zhong, an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry at Seoul National University. This is my great honor and pleasure to speak at this special event. We have faced immediate and critical demands for sustainable development, and we chemists have made tremendous uh, efforts to keep up with those expectations and demands. As a chemist, I am interested in, in learning how modern nature operates numerous chemical reactions and transformations and designing new molecules that may benefit human beings. Thus, I have been fascinated by natural catalysts, so-called enzymes. Uh, the enzymes can lower the activation barrier for chemical transformations, accelerating the reaction rate substantially. The graph on the right demonstrates that enzyme catalysis can accelerate the reaction rate up to several orders of magnitudes, in that it can occur in less than a second in the presence of enzyme, but it may take a um, billion years without the enzymes. Among various enzymes, several vital reactions occurring in nature are mediated by metalloenzymes, which are the met enzymes that contain metal ions such as the zinc, manganese, iron. Metalloenzymes mediate oxygen evolution during photosynthesis, methane oxidation, and nitrogen fixations. Whereas these reactions uh, occur under ambient conditions such as a room temperature at one bar atmosphere, we use incredible amount of the energy to conduct these chemical transformations using synthetic catalysts. For example, for uh, nitrogen fixation, for nitrogen fixation, we are using about 2% of the world's total energy. Thus, you know, if we can find a way how nature operates these chemical reactions under ambient conditions or uh, less harsh conditions, we can save a lot of energies and can contribute on sustainable development. In that regard, we have been interested in designing artificial metalloenzymes. Uh, we created zinc-dependent metalloglycosidases or uh, making a nickel-dependent carcinases that can activate dioxygen and uh, oxidize uh, molecules so-called carcetin. And we, can or we also have designed copper-dependent enzyme that can activate dioxygen and forming hydrogen peroxide and water selectively. And we also created a zinc-dependent enzyme that are associated with antibiotic resistance. But today, I'd like to share one of the recently published work from my laboratory about making photocatalytic enzymes. Nature harvests solar energy during photosynthesis using a protein complex so-called photosystem and, the util and utilize the energy for chemical conversion to make essential molecules such as NADPH. Numerous chemists have been interested in making such photocatalytic chemical transformations, making light harvesting molecules and linking them with inorganic or organometallic catalysts. We surmise that efficient electron transfer between two catalysts could occur when the reaction is mediated by a protein matrix, which becomes more similar to how nature operates these chemical processes. Thus, we design an artificial metalloenzyme by synthetically and genetically introducing two catalysts into a protein so-called myoglobin. Then we propose that blue LED light can activate the uridine-based catalyst, subsequently transferring electrons into the nickel catalyst. Then the latter can conduct a cross-coupling reaction, making a new carbon-oxygen bond under ambient conditions in an aqueous solution. If this intra intramolecular single electron transfer is not efficiently mediated, we might be able to see the formation of dehalogenated products. First, we synthesize uh, three different types of iridium uh, photocatalysts by uh, changing the substituent on the ligands and such that it can change the electrochemical uh, properties. And then we measure the uh, redox potentials uh, and uh, the UV visible spectrum such that we can estimate uh, some of the key uh, chemical properties uh, for the photocatalytic reaction. For the incorporation of a nickel bipyridyl species, we utilize Professor Peter Schultz's method 
where uh, 21st non-canonical non amino acid can be genetically incorporated in the presence of uh, orthogonal amino acid RNA synthesis and transfer RNA pair. Then we expressed our protein in E. coli and the spectrum that I'm show you, showing you here is one of the representative uh, site exclu exclusion chromatography indicating that we can isolate a protein with high yield and purity. And we also characterize our protein by LC mass and suggesting that the protein has the right size. And then we attach these molecules into the protein scaffold, as I uh, explained earlier, and we obtain a crystal structure of these artificial metalloenzymes. As we expected, this iridium porocalus was uh, positioned nearby the nickel bipyrid complexes, indicating that efficient electron transfer can, may occur. Then we finally shine on our uh, design protein or enzyme and see whether RL highlight shown on the left uh, can be converted into phenol containing a new carbon oxygen bond rather than dehalogenated benzene derivatives. Uh, under the standard condition where all these reaction components are present, our design protein undergoes uh, uh, desirable photocatalytic cross-coupling reactions producing 86.3% uh, of the cross-coupling product. In contrast, tiny amount of the halogenated product were formed, resulting in the ratio of these two products defined as a selectivity herein to be 9.8. In contrast, in the absence of any react, uh, reaction component that are necessary for these reactions, uh, very little or no uh, uh, cross-coupling product were generated, suggesting that this enzyme op operates via photocatalytic and single electron mediated cross-coupling reaction that require both uh, iridium and the uh, nickel uh, catalyst. Uh, the cross-coupling product and selectivity decreases if we detach one or both inorganic catalysts from the protein. So the entry 7 indicating that iridium catalyst was detached from our enzyme. Uh, and the uh, uh, entry 8 indicates that both of the catalysts are detached from the protein. And so basically, it is the condition in the absence of protein. As you can see, the cross-coupling product, the yield, were uh, considerably decreased uh, relative to the, the one shown in the, uh, with the standard conditions. And uh, we can also attach each of the inorganic catalysts to the protein. So that would be the case with the entry 9. And you can again see that the cross-coupling product were generated in much uh, less amount indicating that the whole protein is uh, this design uh, protein scaffold is necessary to mediate efficient single electron uh, mediated uh, cross-coupling reaction. We did a lot of kinetic analysis and mechanistic uh, studies, but I'm going to skip those data. But I'd like to share our uh, proposed catalytic mechanism of artificial photocatalytic enzymes. We believe that uh, the iridium photo uh, catalyst that we installed within the protein environments can, act, can be activated upon light, uh, blue LED light uh, and become this iridium-3 excited state. And then this species can react with the sacrificial reductants and forming an iridium-2 state. And we believe that this species is very powerful reducing agent, can transfer the electron uh, to nickel by pyrrole species. Uh, initially, it was, it was nickel 2 species, but now it, it can become uh, nickel 1 species, such that it allows the oxidative addition of RL halide, forming a nickel 3 species. There might be a lot of water molecules around, such that the ligand exchange um, can occur easily, and forming a nickel 3 species where this carbon oxygen bond can be generated and reductive elimination of, uh, of this uh, state can allow the formation of uh, this uh, phenol derivatives. And then nickel species will go back to the nickel 1 species that can uh, constantly undergo uh, cross-coupling reactions. If the electron transfer between iridium catalyst and the nickel ones 
are not so much efficient, then iridium-2 species can directly react with this aryl halide, and that will undergo uh, uh, dehalogenation. As, uh, I, as I showed you earlier, our artificial photocatalytic enzyme have a quite high selectivity, indicating that iridium and the nickel species uh, basically undergo uh, uh, efficient single electron transfer. In addition, we can modulate the chemical reactivity of artificial biocatalysts by redesigning the protein sequence. Initially, we had uh, iridium poor catalyst at C45 position and the nickel bipyridyl catalyst at this uh, 68 positions. But now we can shift the position of this iridium poor catalyst all the way to 126 positions. As we are moving the location of this iridium catalyst, we are basically changing the distance between these two inorganic catalysts. As we are moving uh, uh, far away from uh, the initial positions, basically the distance uh, uh, becomes longer. And then as the distance between the iridium catalyst and the nickel catalyst uh, gets longer, the selectivity goes down, indicating that uh, this photocatalytic cross-coupling reaction requires efficient electron transfer between these two catalysts. Alternatively, we can also change the uh, local environment of this uh, inorganic catalyst and see how that affects the reactivity. So in, uh, in this second case, we basically kept the distance between these nickel catalyst and the photocatalyst to be about roughly about uh, 10 angstrom. And but we what we did is basically moving this uh, the location of the nickel bipyridyl species um, uh, uh, from 68 to all the way to the 50 or 97. As you can see, the distance is about the same. However, the yield and the selectivity go, uh, differs quite drastically, uh, suggesting that the microenvironment of this inorganic catalyst is very important for this uh, photocatalytic cross-coupling reaction, presumably because uh, the surrounding amino acid residue can, e can influence the overall catalytic process. Based on this experiment, we were able to optimize the biocatalytic processes and then this uh, Z97 mutant in particular gave the best uh, yield and the selectivity. Thus, we utilized these mutants for the further studies. Uh, using the, the best mutant that I described just now, we uh, explore whether this uh, biocatalyst or artificial metallo enzyme can, uh, can uh, react with a wide range of substrates. And, and indeed, as you can see in this slide, uh, this enzyme can take a mo uh, wide range of aromatic substrates and then uh, undergoes cross-coupling reaction, indicating that this biocatalyst can be a versatile for uh, chemical transformation. So based on this experiment, we basically were able to demonstrate that we can design artificial metallo enzyme that houses these two inorganic moiety on protein matrix. Uh, this iridium catalyst can harvest the light uh, uh, energy and then uh, 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 mediate one electron transfer to the nickel bipyridyl complex. And this uh, second uh, catalyst can uh, undergo cross-coupling reaction, forming a new carbon-oxygen bond. Uh, by ch uh, changing the protein sequences and redesigning of the protein uh, scaffold, we were able to modulate the selectivity and the reactivity of these reactions. And all these chemical processes is analogous to how nature utilizes solar energy and undergoes uh, multiple electron transfers and utilize those energies for the chemical conversions. So we are hoping that we can extend our uh, studies and then uh, explore uh, the scope of the chemical reactivities such that we can make contributions uh, for sustainable development as a chemist. With that, I'd like to thank everyone in my group. In particular, the work that I presented today is done by uh, a graduate student, Jae Lee, here. And I also appreciate all the, uh, the funding agency. And most uh, importantly, and lastly, uh, thank you so much for the attention and uh, for listening uh, to my presentations. Thank you.